welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank. And I'm Shan Stout. Shan, I think our first guest today might set the new College Town Talk record for accolades and awards. He is a radio legend and one of the most influential broadcasters, not just in the Upper Cumberland, but in Tennessee and really in all of country music. Oh, yes. We are talking to Tennessee Radio Hall of Famer and 94.7 FM, the country giant host, our good friend, Philip Gibbons. I cannot wait. Yeah, and of course, Philip is also a proud Tennessee Tech alumnus and somebody who was still uh, involved with and giving back to the university in so many ways. He was uh, actually the recipient of our Alumni Association's 2019 Outstanding Service Award. And uh, somebody else who's also a proud Tech alum and is now helping other alumni uh, engage with the university is our other guest today, Susan Luna Hazelwood. She's the new director of the Crawford Alumni Center. And Shan, uh, Susan is somebody who's been a friend to me in my time here at Tech. We served on the alumni board together, and I was so happy for her when she was a name to this position. I love everything about that. There is no question. She is the right woman for this job. Now, She's going to give us the inside scoop on the 2023 Alumni Award winners and tell us about the path that led her to this new role. And it's going to be a great conversation. I know it will be. So let's get right to today's interviews. And up first, it's our conversation with radio host, Tennessee Tech sports announcer, and the voice of Cookville himself, Philip Gibbons. Welcome back to College Town Talk. You can hear our next guest on 94.7 FM, the country giant, every day. But the truth is, he is a broadcasting giant in his own right. Now, don't just take my word for it. You can ask the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame because they inducted him into their elite ranks back in 2019. Now, in case you haven't figured it out yet, we're talking about the voice of Cookville himself, Philip Gibbons. Philip's career in radio, it spanned nearly 50 years. And along the way, this icon and Golden Eagles sports announcer has racked up quite the collection of awards. And we can't even name them all, but we're going to hit a few. He was named to Cookville Lifestyle's 2022 Most Influential People list. He also received the Tennessee Tech Alumni Association's 2019 Outstanding Service Award. He is a CMA Award and ACM Award nominated personality of the year. And he even has his own day here in Cookville. In 2018, County Mayor Randy Porter and then City Mayor Ricky Shelton named November 21st as Philip Givens Day. Bill Gibbons, welcome to College Town Talk, friend. Thank you, Shan. It's so good to be here. I think this is going to be a lot of fun today. Well, Philip, we're we're so honored to have you on the program today. You know, you just heard Shan uh, read about some of your many career accomplishments, but something else that you know I think has defined your career has been a commitment to paying it forward. Uh, here in our community, you have volunteered your time and helped raise awareness and money for. Uh, Alzheimer's Tennessee, the Cookville Rescue Mission, the All Good Lions Club, Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure, Habitat for Humanity, and of course, uh, many causes and, and efforts related to Tennessee Tech. And we, we really appreciate that. W why has that been so important to you? And when you, when you look back on all of the philanthropic work you've done, uh, are there particular experiences or causes that stand out to you as being most meaningful? Thank you, Jonathan. These are organizations, ministries that I believe in because the work they do provides a service to families and individuals across the region. And I'm thrilled to help further their cause. While all of these have been and are very meaningful, there's one organization that our radio station and its listeners have helped raise over a million dollars for. And that happens to be St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. Each year for two days, we will conduct a radiothon on the country giant. We've done so for 20 years or more. And that's where our listeners will call in and make pledges to St. Jude. It truly is a wonderful place. And all of these organizations are incredible. But this one does stand out to me. 
Well, you definitely make a difference all the time in so many great ways. Now, Philip, you know, we've been friends for a long time. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Our hope for this podcast has been that it would be a way to share about great things and people like yourself that you can find right here in Cookville. Now, that's whether someone is a tech student, a visitor, a young family, or anyone else. We want it to be relatable. Now, you're a Putnam County native, and you're from Allgood, which is Cookville's neighbor and part of Putnam. But you've worked in Cookville all these years. You've made a choice to plant yourself here because we both know that when someone has all of your talents, you could have found success in a much bigger city. So what is it about Cookville that makes this place so special to you that you would remain here instead of outgrowing us? Well, that's very kind of you to say, but you know, I toyed with the idea early on of leaving, maybe moving to Nashville, but, you know, I've been fortunate to be guest announcer at the Grand Ole Opry 13 consecutive years during the Country Giants special night each year. I've hosted numerous shows at CMA Fest in Nashville. So I guess why move? Uh, it's, we're so close to Music City, and I've been privileged to do all of those things while still living here. But, you know, Cookville is such a treasure. It's a charming city that's growing by leaps and bounds, and its people are so warm and friendly, as is the entire Upper Cumberland. This is home, so I don't think I would want to live anywhere else. <laughs> well, Philip, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You <laughs> obviously have the best of both worlds. You get to do so many exciting and wonderful things without all the crazy city traffic. <laughs> Absolutely right. And thank you so much. <laughs> okay, Philip, this is a question I've been really eager to know. Um, as was already said, you've been in radio for over 50 years. You've met, worked with, interviewed so many of the biggest names in the industry. So uh, who stands out in your mind as as most memorable from from all of those people that that you've met? Well, Jonathan, as you mentioned, I have been privileged to meet and interview some of country's biggest stars and most influential. Uh, I was the first to interview Lady Antebellum, now Lady A, when Capitol Records brought them to Cookville to start their radio tour. Marin Morris, I was her first radio interview in studio. Several others, but there's one thing that I found out, Jonathan, that these people are just regular people. You know, before they got their big break, many of them were working multiple jobs, trying to pay the rent, you know, make ends meet, just like most of us. But the one that was so memorable had to be Garth Brooks. Garth is so genuine. He's so kind. He's real. And he's like that every time you're in his presence. So, yes, I have been blessed to interview a lot of different celebrities. But Garth stands out as the most memorable. Well, I could say the same thing about you. We've been friends a long time, and it has been an honor to know you because no matter what you've accomplished in your life, you're always the same. You're always <laughs> so friendly, so warm, and your lovely wife, Sue, is always ready to give you a hug. I mean, you're just amazing. And I can only say, as I think as we're recording this conversation I'd like to think uh, that there is someone listening um, that you are mentoring them through this interview because there's another crop of Tennessee Tech students getting ready to walk across the stage at graduation in December and take their first steps in a new career. So maybe could you give those graduates some wisdom from your many years of success and uh, maybe for students who are about to enter the workforce, particularly those who might be wanting to follow in your footsteps and pursue a career in broadcasting, what advice would you give them? Well, first of all, thank you for your kind words. I would say work hard, apply yourself, go the extra mile, be willing to learn from others, and don't be afraid to take constructive criticism from those qualified to give it. I mean, that's how you grow. That's how I hopefully continue to grow. I'm always looking for new opportunities to learn and 
if it's someone that's been in this business as long as I have, and they have something to teach me that I'm certainly willing to listen and willing to learn. As far as opportunities in broadcasting, they're on air, marketing, promotions, sales. Now, many of these positions in broadcasting today are entry-level positions. So I would say be willing to work hard. If you're a journalism major, that's a plus, but it's not a necessity. I would also say visit your local radio station in your hometown. Talk to the program director. Meet the general manager. Maybe you could shadow someone for a day or so to see if maybe broadcasting is something that you'd like to pursue. pursue. So that would be my advice to a graduate who is beginning their career or maybe looking to start one in broadcasting. Well, that is great advice. And I, I appreciate the line about uh, accepting uh, constructive criticism from those who are qualified to give it. <laughs> that that seems like uh, a, an important disclaimer. You got to consider the source sometimes. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, Philip, we like to end each interview with the same question. And that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Well, let me just say, Jonathan, that Tennessee Tech is its such a gem. It's a treasure, not only to the Upper Cumberland, but the state, our country, and many foreign countries. Tennessee Tech has graduates all, all across the globe. And Sue and I have two daughters. Both of our daughters attended Tennessee Tech. I've been football public address announcer since the early 1980s, as well as the public address announcer for women's basketball since the 1980s. And I have to say that I love everything about this university, its affordability, all of its colleges, and its focus on science, technology, engineering, mathematics. It's made a huge impact on the Gibbons family for sure, and how blessed we are to have Tennessee Tech in our community. Well, I, I couldn't agree more. That's a, a great way to end this conversation. Philip, thank you so much for uh, being our guest today on College Town Talk. Oh, it was my privilege, and thank you so much for asking. And for our listeners, you can hear Philip on the air here in Cookville and across 49 counties in Tennessee and Kentucky, weekdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., on 94.7 The Country Giant. You can also listen online at countrygiant.com. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by the director of Tennessee Tech's Crawford Alumni Center, Susan Luna Hazelwood. Susan is a 2007 Tech graduate and Cookville native whose career has taken her to roles with local favorites like WCTE and the Bryan Symphony Orchestra and faraway places such as Charleston, South Carolina, where she began her career as development coordinator for the Charleston Symphony Orchestra. Before her role as director of the Alumni Center, Susan was Tech's associate athletics director in its Office of University Development. She also previously served as Senior Director of Individual Giving with the Tennessee Performing Arts Center in Nashville. Susan and her husband, Michael, reside here in Cookville with their daughter, Ellie. Susan, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I am honored to be here, and I'm excited to chat with you both. Now, Susan, I'm so happy to have you on the show today. Now, we have to start today's interview by saying congratulations. Now, while you've stayed close to tech for many years, you started this latest role only in September. So how is it going so far? And what made you decide to throw your hat in the ring for this new position? Thank you, Shan. Yes, I'm thrilled to be in this new role as the director of the Crawford Alumni Center. And although we are on a podcast, you all can see me and I talk with my hands. So for those out there, if you ever see me talking, I talk a lot with my hands. Uh, yes, so this new position <laughs> combines so many of the things that I love and that I'm passionate about, including engaging with alumni, seeking support for the university, and promoting the school that gave me such a wonderful college experience. And honestly, I was eager to be back in more of a leadership role, and this was the perfect opportunity. So I'm happy to be here. Well, we're happy that you are in that role. And Susan, I know that Homecoming is one of the Crawford Alumni Center's biggest events each year. We are actually recording this conversation a few days before Homecoming. It's going to air a little while after. But one thing we do already know the outcome of 
is the winners of the Alumni Association's 2023 Alumni Awards. And uh, I, I have bought my ticket. I will see you at that event. But you all have some excellent award recipients this year, two of whom are also the Grand Marshals of the Homecoming Parade. So can you tell us about uh, this year's winners? Absolutely. The Alumni Association has four alumni awards each year, and we have five award winners this year, and they are all fantastic. So we'll start with the Outstanding Service Award, Michael and C.G. England. They are local, and many people listening to this from the Cookville area will know them. They have done so much for this community, and as you mentioned, Jonathan, they will be serving as the Grand Marshals for this year's Homecoming Parade. So I hope that once once you all are listening to this, you will have seen the parade and will have seen whatever entertainment they come up with. Uh, we're very grateful to have them as alums and to have them a part of the homecoming parade. In addition to Michael and CG, we have three other wonderful award winners. The outstanding young alumnus is Lamar Moore. The outstanding philanthropy winner is David Morgan. And our final award winner is W. Anthony Sinkfield, who is being honored as our distinguished alumnus. It is so exciting to be able to have alumni come back to campus and have the opportunity the opportunity to celebrate them with these awards. We are proud that they are alums and they make tech proud. So it, it's an exciting time. Susan, what a powerhouse list you've got there. And CG and Michael, obviously a powered couple, they uh, always bring 150% to anything that they do. Now, on another note, much of your career has involved a topic that many people don't like to talk about, which is money. Now, in fact, in addition to an undergraduate and master's degree, I found out you hold a nonprofit fundraising certificate and are a certified fundraising executive, which explains so much of your resume of what you've accomplished. Now, I'm just going to ask you, what are some of the tricks of the trade when it comes to working with prospective donors or getting people to give to a worthy cause. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Shan. And I, I often have people tell me when they hear what I do that, oh, I could never go out and ask people for money. I get that a lot. And it's understandable. It's not easy and it's it can be awkward. Uh, but while I do definitely go out and ask people for money, there's so much more to what I do. It's more about building relationships and forming partnerships and helping people connect with organizations and causes that they are passionate about. And as far as tricks of the trade, I think that the biggest one is that you have to truly believe in what you are asking others to support. Every role I've had has been with an organization that I love and one that has a mission that I believe in and that I value and that I would value even if I were not in this career. I also think it's important to personally support the organization that you are asking others to support. And I hope that when I am speaking to others about Tennessee Tech, that the passion I have shines through and that that helps them see the importance of what we're doing at Tech. Uh, so basically, yes, I'm asking for money, but it's but I hope that more than money, we find a way to build the relationships and create partnerships. Susan, we spoke earlier this fall for a story that's going to be in the next issue of Visions, which is our uh, magazine for alumni and, and donors and friends of the university. And um, it, was, it was a great conversation. I'm excited for people to read that. But whenever I'm interviewing somebody on campus uh, for a story, I'll always ask them, you know, at the end of at the end of the interview, if there's anything I didn't ask or anything that that we didn't cover that they would want said. And uh, when I asked you that question, you shared a really moving story about your daughter's medical journey and how the Golden Eagle community has supported you uh, th throughout that time. Can you recount a little bit of that story for our listeners? And most importantly, how's your daughter doing? Thank you for asking this, Jonathan. This past year has changed our lives, and this journey will always be a part of my story now. On November 1st of 2022, my then three-year-old daughter, Ellie, was diagnosed with cancer. Stage four, high-risk neuroblastoma. Terrifying. Immediately after her diagnosis that same day, she was admitted to Vanderbilt Children's Hospital and started treatment. Since then, she has endured chemo, radiation, multiple surgeries, a stem cell transplant, immunotherapy, and so much more. We've spent more time in the hospital than at home this year. Watching your child suffer and having no control over any of it is horrible. <laughs> And although this has been the worst year, 
I'm incredibly grateful to be a part of the Tennessee Tech community and the Cookville community. John Smith, Kevin Braswell, the University Advancement Team, all of Tech's leadership have been so good to me. And they have given me the opportunity to keep working while understanding that my daughter has to be my first priority. This community rallied behind us in so many ways, and we are lucky to be a part of it. I am so excited to say that Ellie is doing well. Her latest scans show that there are no signs of cancer. She has one inpatient treatment left in November, and then she will have completed her treatment plan. Ellie is the strongest and bravest person I know, and I'm so proud to be her mother. I can't imagine having to go through something like this without the support of my husband and my parents and my sister and this wonderful community. So thank you to Tennessee Tech, to the Upper Cumberland, to anyone I've ever met that has, and not met, we've had so many people who heard about Ellie and heard about our story reach out to us. And we are grateful and we will never be able to properly thank, but please know that we have heard everyone and we are grateful and we thank you. Well, Susan, you know, I've, I've talked to you personally about your journey and Ellie's journey and all that you've been through as a mother. And um, obviously, Ellie gets her strength and her resolve directly from you. And she is blessed to have you as her mother. And I think that that a child, you know, looks to that parent, that role model for that strength so that they can endure something that is so much more than most people could ever go through. And, and I've, I've watched you continue to work, which is so challenging and support her in every way and just remain strong. When I know that you, you probably had moments you just wanted to crumble. And so you've been a role model to women um, across our community as well. You know, we're watching you, we're praying for you. Now, finally, Susan, we like to end each interview with the same question. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has personally impacted your life? Thank you, Shannon. Thank you for those kind words. Uh, I am definitely stronger now than I ever have before. And hopefully that will continue for the rest of my life and Ellie's life and, and show through the work that we do. Um, obviously, Tennessee Tech has had a huge impact on my life in so many ways, from meeting lifelong friends to giving me a career. However, if I wanted to pick one, it would be that Tech gave me an opportunity and a reason to stay connected to the community, even when I was living in different cities and states. Tech and the Upper Cumberland are special places, and even though I grew up here, being here as a college student, as an alum, now as an employee, all different but fantastic experiences. And so it has clearly had a huge impact and will always have an impact on my life. Susan, it's been such a pleasure talking with you today. It's always nice to see you and for our listeners to hear you. And we just appreciate you being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you so much, Shannon Jonathan. I appreciate the opportunity to tell some of my story. I'm always looking to connect with tech alumni and those in the community. So I encourage people to reach out and to get involved. Call, email me, reach out on social media. I would love to hear from you. And for our listeners, you can learn more about Tennessee Tech's Crawford Alumni Center by visiting tntech.edu slash alumni. We want to thank Philip Gibbons and Susan Luna Hazelwood for being our guests today on College Town Talk. And thank you for listening. Don't forget, if you're enjoying this podcast, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and be sure to leave a review and share with your friends. We'll meet you back here again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville, Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.